Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today, bringing you guys and gals One Piece! One Piece! Oh. Yeah, the One Piece War Chapter 849. Now, the title of the chapter, ugh, Bropper in Mirrorland. Oh no. I mean, I knew it was gonna happen eventually, but a chopper-centered chapter. Yikes, man. And we just had Pedro and fucking Brooke stealth in, and then Pudding, I'm doing something crazy, and then, ah, but we're gonna get Chopper now. Either way, people, we have ourselves here, this color cover, and it's Luffy and it's various shonen characters dressed up as the Strat crew. So you have Luffy himself, then you have Midoriya as Sanji in the back. I think this is the guy from Black Clover who's Zoro. Then you have Hinata from Haikyuu. He is Chopper, fitting in some ways. And then you have Nami and Brooke, Sanji, Frankie, and various other forms. Note how the Robins, I think they're both dudes, which makes me a little bit salty because I'm like, wait, wait, hold on. You mean the best girl in One Piece? Nay, the best girl in anime? The dudes? Oh, come on now. Fuck that. But either way, folks, I'm going to make this chapter review, or I believe it's going to be fairly quick because, again, this is chopper focus though carrot is there and brulee is doing like she's gonna eat carrot so let's just see how things roll all right let me just dive to chapter one piece fuck it that's kind of cool like that cover is fairly and there's brooke jesus all of a sudden uh maybe he is the soul king so it would be fitting in some sense oh my god whoa the brontosaurus clan i don't doubt that she's fierce but so freaky oh good lord man Whew. the littlefoot tribe in one piece are just a funky and that one particular a freaky bunch the vince smoke guest room okay starting off with germa in the vince smoke where's reju no clue i saw her leave a bit ago oh right more importantly father where will those two live after the marriage ceremony in germa obviously so he has the fucking deal Sign just a deal with his brothers and his dad if he actually did get married. That's fucking ridiculous. I mean, like, why can't like they live on their own, like in some remote island somewhere? Like, why is it that like he has to live with like hold on? Well, let me just keep on reading. Oh, uh, in Germa, obviously. If we don't take that girl as hostage, who knows? Hostage? Who knows what they'll start to demand of us in the future? Remember that we're dealing with pirates here. So they're using pudding as lever. Oh, yeah, because they do want to conquer the north and the kings of the north, potentially. Okay, so that is actually a smart move. So then you have putting with them, and of course Big Mom would want to make sure that the daughter that actually went with her wishes to give her immense power via the German would be okay. Like, when it comes to Lola, fuck Lola. But if Pudding actually didn't marry Sanji, like, like if things went the way they planned, then uh, Big Mom would wanna make sure that Pudding would be okay. Aren't you worried that they'll try a similar tactic on us, though? Quit being ridiculous, Niji. If they tell us that they'll kill Sanji, do you think we'll be affected in the slightest? Of course, oh, oh. That's true. Man, I'm so excited to be living with Sanji again. Niji is just warped, son. Like, among the three brothers, Niji is the most warped. EGG seems to be the most level-headed, the most cool. Yonji, I mean, fuck him, honestly, because Sanji already kicked his ass. Niji, man, like, just sick. Here we go. Mirror World, Brulee's house. He has a house in the Mirror World? Weird. And she's making a stew. Like, this reminds me of, what's that one story called now? Uh, Hans, is it Hansel and Gretel? I'm almost sure it's Hansel and Gretel. Here is the group. You have the croc dude, you have Brulee, you have the rabbit guy, whatever his name is, and the crow. Basically, they're all there, buddy, carrot. Ribbit? Ribbit. Brulee just dug her own grave. That thing up there is actually a frog that was made to look like carrot, thanks to Brulee's powers. Okay, so the reason why there's ribbits, apparently that carrot is not actually carrot, but it's, hold on, but then cut the rope, oh no, please don't eat me. Remember how she did that before to like confuse Luffy, where she made copies of like Sanji, Pudding, and Nami, and carrot as well. Well, they couldn't talk, so how is this frog talking? Okay, hold on, let me continue reading. This is a little bit 
interesting. And they don't notice this at all. The carrot clone is actually saying ribbit ribbit like the frog. Because it is a frog. And right here, the real carrot is actually hiding in the attic. Wah, save me proper. Okay, all right, plan in action. So here are the tough looking people. Diesel, this monkey chimney thing. Well, maybe not a monkey, but a chimney thing. Then you have the noble croc. I'm so croc and hungry. Oh, Wait. oh my God, bro. What is that? <laughs> are you serious? I'm so croc and hungry. Like it's so bad, it kind of reminds me of the Suicide Squad's uh, Killer Croc. Ugh, terrible. Time to give that adorable face of yours third degree burn. So she's still salty because her face is all fucked up. I mean, granted, her thing is the scar, but I would say it's that damn nose. The thing's a freaking sword. Jesus. And then Randolph's gonna cut the ropes. All right, so characters threw something at Randolph as he was gonna cut the ropes. It was a pretty fast throw. He gets knocked off his feet. Then here we have Brule freaking out, what the hell? This is no time to pull jokes, Randolph. So she didn't see that throw at all. Very fast throw. Then the chimney guy, Diesel, Lady Brule, some intruder is inside the attic and Carrot jumps down to save the frog. So Carrot diving in action. Quite literally, there are two little bunny girls. So she didn't know. Okay, so that's interesting. So the clones that she creates via her own mirror, not even she can tell which one's fake and which one is real. And the clear indication of that is the fact that she didn't even know that she was gonna boil the frog instead of the actual carrot. Ooh. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit. That's gonna leave a mark. I don't think Brule is someone that has any special physical attributes. Like, I don't think she can use armored hockey. And her abilities, I don't think, grant her any, like, physical defenses. And I don't think her body is that durable to begin with. Like, she's not physically trained. Like, let's say Sanji, Zoro, Luffy, etc., etc. Mmm. Talk about burns. So fuck your face. Your body is gonna be fucked up at this if you can't die. <laughs> in time stop that's dangerous and no 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 she can't dodge there's no way so then you hear her screaming in pain chopper reverts to brain point then he goes rumble so we see the end result here brulee and the company getting splashed with this boiling hot stew randolph now jumps into action electrical luna and it looks like Yeah, okay. Like, are we sure this should be called Bropper in the Mirror World? Like, uh, Carrot in the Mirror World? She just shut them down. The Crane, Randolph, and the others. Boom! Electrical Luna, gone! Well, hold on, maybe they tanked it, and then now they're gonna continue to fight. Chopper and Monster Point, right behind the alligator dude. It looks like he's grabbing his tail. My guess here is gonna slam him down. And indeed, Chopper, gonna slam him down, slams him down on these dudes that were gonna rush him. So uh, that is my favorite part about Chopper, his monster point. Monster point, I do like, it's cool. Aside from that, fuck Chopper, in all honesty. Like, I fucking hate Chopper. Fuck Chopper. But I respect Monster Point. Ever since we first saw Monster Point, and he did what he did to Komadori, ever since he tossed him. <laughs> Since that toss, I was like, damn. Respect. I respect the fuck out of Monster Point. Even though it got bitched up because he has control now, and then he has to maintain like some degree of cuteness when he's doing it. Ugh. Oh, the cuteness is killing me. It's toxic for ugh. But it's still beastly. So he slams down the noble croc on these dudes. Chopper roars like, like this. Ugh. Ugh, it's so reminiscent. Like, remember when he first roared in this form? It sends shivers down the spine, man. I love this form. Like, oh, fuck, man. The carrot, I think, was more impressive, though. So, Brule fucked up. Randolph, fucked up. Noble Croc, fucked up. And here we have Diesel. I must report this to Mama immediately. And Diesel dips quick. So, yeah, now we gotta go catch Diesel. Oh. Well, that was a quick catch. Oh yeah, Carrot is really fast. She has immense leg strength. You fools, not a single person can catch me once I start running. No, caught, got him, bit him. And guess who? 
so he can't see and now he just falls down because he couldn't see obviously the frog that was gonna be eaten is now in brulee's face and brulee's again got fucked up now we'll be able to travel around the island through these mirrors let's find everyone okay so they said before but they were going to use the mirror to their advantage maybe escape through those means and now we're in sandy's room so i'm assuming that's all for the brother chopper bropper stuff okay you know what so what I'm gonna say here is, and where are we go? I don't want to give any credence to the furries because this fucking nah, dude, just yeah, the furries. Oh Christ! But oh my God! But but carrot, I think would be say it with your chest. She could join the strat crew. Now, granted, she lacks the whole, as far as we know, she lacks the whole, like, dream thing. Because in order to join the Strat Crew, you need to have a dream, some type of goal, at least, that you want to strive to achieve, and so on and so forth. I always wanted to see a combat-savvy woman join the Strat Crew. And I always believed that the next Strat Crewmate would be a chick. You've had so many guys join at, at this point in time. Okay, well, to be fair, Chopper's a reindeer. Uh, at first, I thought it'd be Monet, uh, but Monet, that didn't work out, obviously. Then, maybe someone from Dress Rosa, but they were princesses that had obligations to the king, King Riku, to the family, so no. Carrot is kind of like a free bird. She lacks the dream thing at this point in time. But if she has that, if that is revealed, like my dream is to see the world, or my dream is X, Y, and Z, there's a strong possibility that she's going to be in the Strat crew. On top of that, she does have the combat skills, I think, necessary. Because this is not the grand line. Nico Robin is good. I mean, shit, she was a former assassin. But we haven't seen Robin in like a one-on-one -on -one fight in like a fucking very long time. And on top of that, Kara can maybe tango with some heavy hitter chicks. Like, for example, Sanji won't kick a girl, but let's say you have Zoro, he's busy with some dude, Luffy, the same thing, and then you have Sanji, he has to fight some chick. Well, you got Kara maybe take over, and Kara's fairly strong. You see what I'm saying? So, basically, what I'm trying to say here is that Kara, from that combat standpoint, she fits. She would fit my ideal when it comes to the next Straw Hat crew member. Even though she's a mink, and then that would give credence to the furries, and I wouldn't want to see that shit be a thing, but it'd be a fucking thing if she would join the crew. So that issue would, of course, be tacked on because she'd have to join the crew. But either way, though, either way, so far, Carrot, I respect her skill. All right, how she kicked the thing, Electric Luna, they were out. This dude was running away. She speed blitzed this dude. I'm like, yo! And also, I want to put out there that Pedro could join. I would like to see both Pedro and Carrot join the Strat crew. But that depends on how things roll after Wano Kuni. So, continue on with this chapter. You didn't make the cut. The treasure room. Soul King Brook. Dude's already down. Brook has keys. It seems like this is the key. Why you? How dare you cause such a mess in here? Swallow, and I think it's French. So, it should be Banderole. Something like that. And does he cut this guy in? No, he doesn't cut him in two. But it's the frozen wings of the netherworld, son. <laughs> Damn. Soul King Brook. So oh, this guy, he's out. I mean, there's no way he's going to. I mean, maybe he could actually still be active. Though I doubt it. No, no, I don't think so. No, because next page, it's the other guy now. I came here telling my partner in crime, Pedro, would you mind becoming the bait? To risk his life, I simply must gain something worthy in return. So now this guy rushes Brooke. Brooke easily dispatches of this guy, and he sends him packing. Brooke has no muscle mass, and yet he sends him packing in order to avoid a complete loss of face. This this guy is a fairly large dude, and with one thrust, sends him flying. In this case, kind of like Kizaru, in a certain sense. In order to gain maximum force, though he lacks the mass, he has the acceleration. So he have more speed, quick thrust, then mm, mm, gone. Who says I have no face to lose in the first place? Now, I did really want to see a little more of a Brook in action, because it's been a very long time. But nonetheless, Brook, impressive. Oh my, 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 my God. Yo. Oh. What?
It's a good idea to mess with the highlight of my day during the wedding. What? What? Get that ass in gear. Get the fuck out of Dodge, Brooke. Oh, man. It's like Bellamy, and I hate to compare Brooke to Bellamy. But it's like Bellamy facing up against Whitebeard. It's like... No, Bellamy, you're way out of your league, man. Stand down, motherfucker, stand down. No, your roll. Fuck, I didn't, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mama, you didn't have to come all the way. Move aside, Smoothie. Slams. They couldn't get in. Like, that's crazy, too. Like, this door apparently is a fairly, you know, sturdy door. Smoothie couldn't get in, and I know she's fairly powerful, i.e. her bounty. Big Mom just walks through the fucking <laughs> This big bitch. Wait, what? Not a door that any random person could just break down. And Big Mom just walks through it like, who the, who the fuck am I? Like, bitch, what the, god damn. In the same tone of voice, too. Like, who, who the fuck, who the fuck am I to my tether, who the idiot? It's the same goddamn voice tone. You know that shit. You think someone like that should have an effeminate voice? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking mental? Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, fucking Brooke is done. Yo, Brooke just got KO'd. They lost a straw hat. It's it's over. They're losing two straw hats. Now, would you look at that? That's one interesting creature I see up there. Heart. Oh, no. Nah. She's going to get fucking Mondo and put this fucker in the world of books. She did make promises to not harm the straw hats. But, like I said before... That doesn't mean that she's gonna keep her fucking promise. And you think with a heart at the end of a comment like that, that she's gonna keep her word to Sanji? No, she's gonna say, yeah, they're okay, everything's cool and fine. And then behind his back, Brooke in the world of books. Unless they take out Montador. Yo, Brooke, bail. I don't know, just, just run. The mission failed. Pedro, I'm sorry, we failed. That's it, it's over. We out, dead. How do you like, <laughs> how do you escape? The answer is you don't escape. You do not escape. There is no hiding. There is no running from the big bitch when she's staring you down with a heart. No, 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 no. Oh, fuck. It's over. It's over. Pedro. Whoa. Okay. This face off. Pedro time ago. But it's like, I care about this, but I'm far more concerned with Brooke right now. Like, Brooke, how? Brooke. Brooke, talk to me, Brooke. Brooke. Okay. You know. Wait. How are Big Mom's powers going to work against someone like Brooke, whose very being is soul? His soul, like Big Mom's soul, probably beats on a higher frequency. Granted, She's Big Mom, so I would say the frequency of her soul is stronger. Can she take years off of Brooke's life? Is that even possible? But but he's already bone and shit. Like, how does that... I mean, I guess take away enough and that like, his bones could rot away. I don't... If she does take away soul from you, could you, like, could you, like, get it back somehow? Could Brooke get it back because his soul is different? Yo... I don't, I don't even know anymore. Okay, let me just go with the chapter. Let me continue with this chapter. Shit, dude. Despite being enemies, I've always respected you as a powerful opponent, Pedro. Captain of the Nox Pirates. The Nox. The Nox. So that's the mink pirate crew that Pedro was the captain of way back when. Every time we would see each other, the scars on our left eyes would begin to itch. Oh, wait, Pedro's eye is covered. It was only a mere five years ago when you were still a man who was incredibly attached to the idea of staying alive. So why must you repeat the same mistake twice? It's clear that you don't have much time left. That's time we were talking to Pedro. Whoa. 
Oh. Oh. What the fuck? I guess Pedro is not joining the Strat crew now. For on that day, and you can see Tombo's face, son, Mama took 50 years, 50 years away from your regular lifespan bone. And then Pedro, again, scar, left eye gone. Yes, I'm well aware. I have no intention of returning to my home country alive. Okay, so there was more to it. Oh, ho, ho, Pedro. 50 years, what the fuck? Unless he can get those years back somehow, some way. I mean, that could be possible, but that would involve powers that involve soul or, because soul and life force seem to be the same thing in One Piece to a degree. Like they're not all that different because you could argue a major difference between soul and life. That's like some yin and yang stuff. But in One Piece, they appear to be almost the same if not exactly the same. And so via soul frequency or life force frequency, maybe you can somehow take some of the powers back from Big Mom or take some of the creatures around the area and return that 50 years loss back to Pedro. All right, okay, all right, okay, okay. Is it a chapter? Hold up. What the fuck is that? And we're not on break. What the fuck? Yo, just slam after slam. Oda is bringing the shit hard as fuck. Wait, raise you. Yo, I almost missed this page. Like, I was like legit about to end this chapter live reaction because I thought chapter was over. Like, you're gonna, you end with Pedro and Tamago, and then there's a page after that. Um, raise you. Uh, what the fuck is going on there? Why are you bleeding? Big Mom, Brooke. Pedro Tomago, raise you. Oda, dog, like, chill. Take it easy. Okay, she appears to be bleeding from her leg, where the six is on her left thigh. What in the world happened? And there was a trail of blood right there on the walls, and it's dripping down. And what the fuck happened to raise you? All right, you know, okay. I'm gonna reread this chapter a few more times. I'm gonna do a review of this later. So, and of the previous chapter as well. So I'm gonna see you guys and gals later. King of Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Raise you, man. You better not die on me yet. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You still have a lot more to do before you start kicking the bucket. Fuck is this? But who, though? Like, who attacked you? Or was that self-inflicted? Okay, like I could sit here for like 30 minutes and make up like different theories on that. We'll save that for another day. King Lightning, rate the video, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice goddamn day. Slam after slam after Oda. Strong. Very strong ending. Have a nice night, people.